You there? Last one, last one. You can do take, it. I believe take, in you. Take three. This is the first time that I actually like fumble. I usually just. It's like, okay. I make you nervous. It's fine. I don't <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fun Street Podcast, where we talk with image makers and light shapers about the artistry and process of creativity. Today, we have one of my closest friends. Uh, they are a Brooklyn-based performer, producer, nightlife personality. She is also a model, burlesque performer, costume, wardrobe, maestro. She is also, there's so many slashes to this person that I will just have to uh, turn over the mic to her and let her describe or let them describe themselves. So please welcome Elise Walsh. Yay! So, hello, Elise. Now uh, tell the people who you are and what you do. Oh, well, uh, I run a couple of small businesses myself as a costumer, as a drag producer and performer doing burlesque and writing cabarets, performing in rock operas at the Sideshow by the Seashore at Coney Island. I do lots of different things. I work for a couple different theaters, doing stitching and doing wardrobe. But right now I'm a whole lot of unemployed, like lots of other people in New York City. So <laughs> and that I'm is on true. quarantine. And, and, you know, while we are in the topic of COVID-19, coronavirus, let's just get that out of the way so we can proceed with a conversation of more yeah. of the craft and artistry. How are you dealing with the quarantine, the shutdown? How are you feeling about all of this? Well, I have a couple of choice feelings about it. Um, I really think that even though as a person who works in entertainment and in live entertainment and live events, so the reason why my job has disappeared, of all the different jobs that I have, all of it's gone for the next two months at the very least, is because we rely on having access to the outside world and to each other to be able to create parties and create events mm -hmm. and everything. So huge economic fuck fuckery like big time fuckery a lot of people are fucked over even not outside of the entertainment industry as well so many different industries are hurting by this but um as an immunocompromised person uh, as a disabled person with autoimmune i'm really fucking scared of just getting the disease and dying <laughs> so i'm kind of at this point so i went to the grocery store for a last ditch effort because i had to clear out my stuff at coney and go pick up all the makeup and all the other shit that i left there before the show got canceled, and um, I bought like a whole cake because mm. oh, my birthday good. is coming up, and yeah. like you know, the virus canceled my birthday, so I decided that sheet caking would be uh, a, a good way <laughs> to distract myself. And my partner and I did mushrooms, and I had never done mushrooms See, before. We're, so all that was an experience. we're all dealing with our own ways. That's a quarantine first. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, but like great. how uh, I it's unprecedented. I don't think anybody has anticipated an event where, you know, people are mostly okay, but they just cannot go out. So Yeah, well, we can't because the risk of infecting and carrying is too great at this point. Yeah. And yeah. How, how has it been inside? How's the quarantine? How are you entertaining yourselves while you, while you are just in your apartment or in your immediate neighborhood? Right. So the funny part is I've actually been isolating for weeks before the quarantine started because I got two crazy chest infections back to back. Mm. So because I was preparing for this huge rock opera that was going to be for a whole month, I was on strict, everyone stay the fuck away from me. My partner slept in a different room for five days <laughs> oh, while no. I had a fever. And that was great because she didn't get what I got and she was, she was sick too. So we both got better. And then since then we've been fine. Um, so we've been playing a lot of uh, Mario Kart. We've okay. been going through a movie list, things that we haven't been able to check off. Like um, we finally watched a few horror movies. We finally watched Frozen 2 today, which was actually really good. See? It's They're surprisingly good. I was like, okay, all right. Very adult content. I see you, Disney. But like, uh, yeah, we, we did shrooms, and that was supposed to be my 30th birthday present, and it it came early because oh, slightly we were early. a bit sad. So it, we had a, a very interesting time, and I would love to talk more about that at some point to really thoroughly describe <laughs> that experience. And uh, what else? I did. I did some sewing. I made a. I had actually made a, a sparkly face mask for one of the 
oh, crew members, the puppeteer who was, yeah, because she'd gotten the flu. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'll make you a mask. And because I haven't seen her now, I've now rhinestoned it. Okay. So it's sparkly just waiting for we're, Waiting we're, to see more, and ironically or not, yeah. depending on when it actually gets to her. We're going to discuss more of the economics of being a an artist or like a hustler in uh, this day and age because it's, you know, we've talked about this a lot of times, but it's always funny how people identify as one profession. Like, hey, I'm a model, I'm an actress, I'm a this yeah. and that. But in actuality, people have like 16 different jobs just to survive, particularly in a city in New York. But like staying on topic of being quarantined or being in a lockdown in a place like New York, like how how... How, what was the wake up call? How long do you think you could hang on doing like diminished income uh, until you need your your multiple jobs to start uh, popping back again? Well, the financial loss that I've already suffered because of canceled work that was promised and was confirmed for this month. I'm already at about $900 of lost income, which is easily another month's worth of rent. Mm. So within the next month, some kind of work has to come back Mm -hmm. or like, you know, the government has to step in and give a stimulus, which I think is the intermittent, you know, aid for this because so many people are already fucked because we live paycheck to paycheck where we are one health crisis away from being homeless. That's true. I mean, just intense. <laughs> you know, if, if Corona is not going to do you in, it's probably bankruptcy. So that's kind of the overall yeah. sentiment, not just during Starvation. this, yeah, not just this quarantine right. period, but like for the most part, people, you know, they don't die of disease. They die of, of not being to, able to take care of themselves. But, um, Absolutely. well, I'm glad, you know, it's in the early stages of, of the, the lockdown, you know, we're all trying to entertain ourselves. Uh, I'm glad you're doing okay and still, you know, entertained with uh, Mario Kart and some shrooms. Ooh, we're uh, trying. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I brought you here because, you know, part of the Fun Street podcast is talking to, you know, cool people that does cool things. Uh, but for the most part, people don't see the hustle. The, people don't see how hard it is to maintain yeah. a passion. So let's start with that first. You have yeah. so many slashes you know, both in <laughs> in in uh, sexual orientation and identification, but also in in professions. What is gonna? What is your? What are your main passions? Passions or professions? Because there is overlap. But yeah, let's let's do however you would want to inter- interpret it. Let me close this. Um, so. In terms of passions, my passions is creating art. So my professions being a um, costume designer and creator and working in the theater, either on stage or off stage are also, they're my passions and my profession. So I'm very like, I'm very lucky that I can do what I love for a living. And then there's production management, which comes into things that I am good at which uh, can be stressful, but I love like management. I love working with people and creating art and immersive events and making that stuff work. Like a well-oiled machine is very satisfying mm-hmm. in a very real and tangible way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You sing, you photograph, you, you know, craft, you perform, you dance. You Those are... Producing too. Yeah. So if, if like gun to your head, you can only keep one, what would you kind of specialize in or what would you, what is the one thing that you can't live without understanding that, you know, living without, you know, taking away part of your art is probably losing like a a limb. If I could only pick one of them, um, I want to still be able to use my hands to make stuff. That's what I'm most connected to right now because I know that's a shelf life thing. As a person with arthritis, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to make stuff with my hands forever. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to harness the use of that now and really make some cool shit while I can. That's awesome. And, yeah. you know, for you, you talked about, you know, getting stuff from, from Coney recently. Uh, let's talk about yeah. a little bit about that because you know part of your bio is you you've you've done uh, a one uh, a one person show you've you've done stage you've produced it 
mm-hmm. uh, but this is something that is you know a lot more fresh um you know let's talk about that you know the you know how you got into being able to be in a per, uh, production uh in coney island yeah, so let's talk about Bloody Brains in a Jukebox. It's a new sci-fi rock opera written by the mayor of Coney Island, Dick Sigan, mm-hmm. who's a Yale drama alum, and music written by Nikos Brisco, also known as Pink Velvet Witch, who mm-hmm. we have we've collaborated before. They actually had was the were the person who put me on the bill to help me create the cabaret, the one person show. So they're very much been involved in a lot of collaborative projects. They've worked together a lot in the last few years on music stuff, but I had no idea when I had gone to audition that Nick oh. had in the music for it. I was totally surprised by that. I just knew they were looking for a Dan Mansfield lookalike. And I was like, Oh, I can get a blonde wig and push my boobs together and <laughs> do a little thing and sing some Led Zeppelin. And I got the part. So um, so you auditioned with Led doing, Zeppelin. Sorry. You auditioned with Led Zeppelin. Yeah, wearing Dope. a leopard print jumpsuit. You know, James Man- Jane Mansfield's a huge inspiration for rock and punk and mm-hmm. a lot of, um, you know, she was a sex bomb. Yeah. yeah. But and- she's also really a brainy, a brainy <laughs> lady. So she was really cool. It was really cool to be able to dive into researching her as a person to get into character a little bit. But the character was very fluid and different from Jane as a person as well because the idea is that we've had our brains swapped out and you know where they're trying to find the cure for cancer they're like brain surgeons who are in a crash and they had their brains swapped out it's kind of like the man with two brains and Rocky Horror Picture Show had a weird baby <laughs> set between California and Nevada <laughs> uh, and it's too bad the production is is postponed for now yeah, but we are hoping that we're going to be able to see that. You know, you know. Yeah, we have plans to bring it back for sure. I actually, um, I have this this wig. Actually, I had used for the um, John Waters themed drag show I was a part of a few years ago at Coney during the Burlesque at the Beach series. Oh, but the, it was used as a really cool prop in the <laughs> show as well. But. Yeah, for the audio yeah, listeners, if you team. if you can't you you can't see, but she's now donning a really tall, curly blonde, blonde wig with be- bejeweled, bejeweled um, blonde wig. I really don't want to ruin the surprise of what this wig does because it's actually a prop, like it's a okay. magic prop. Well, they'll they'll have to come back and see the actual production when it does. Uh, uh, happen in Coney Island yeah. again. That's, maybe we'll see what happens. We're gonna maybe, you know, maybe there was talks of maybe filming it mm-hmm. and doing a like a film kind of production of it, kind of because it is kind of like a John Waters film mm-hmm. in that way. I think it would translate very well to film as like a short feature, well, full feature because it's two and a half hours. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. First time back in theater after ten years, and it's two and a half hours all sung through. I was like, I'm gonna. Die. <laughs> what the fuck have I gotten myself into? And As a lead character, I have like the most lines out of everybody probably cumulatively. And it was just like so much for my brain to handle. And speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of a two and a half hour production, speaking of doing a lead role, like what are the sorts of things that you do to prepare for the different art things that you do on a day and day basis? You know, um, I mean, you sing, you dance, you create. Yeah. A lot of those require not just... Uh, talent and skill, but preparation and practice. So walk for walk sure. the people through how you continuously improved your craft in a day in day out basis. Um, having a structure and having a schedule really helps. Like even when I was still working at XIV doing costumes with them, I was in the rehearsal process for the rock opera. So packing and planning and prepping was my mm-hmm. ultimate best friend because if I didn't bring my tea mug with me and an extra tea bag so I could boil water so I could drink tea on the way to rehearsal so I'm already warmed up so I can get there do sing, singing for three hours and then go home go to sleep get you know rinse mm-hmm. repeat meal prepping and snack prepping and making sure my script's always in my backpack making sure I always have a water bottle always have extra tea bags and like you know sinus stuff and all of those things so mm-hmm. being like making sure I have a go bag at all times with an extra grocery bag in case I decide to get grocery groceries on the way home at like midnight because shop rights open. <laughs> like, and, and that's something that, yeah. you know, a lot of, a lot of people miss is because, you know, 
yeah, you know, you do rehearsals, you sing, you you vocalize, but you know, having a having like a performance talent is almost like a twenty four hour job because you have to hydrate, you have to have tea, you have to yeah. clear your nasal passages. You can't drink these, you can't smoke that. So I um, drink coffee. Oh, you can't drink coffee. You're not supposed to. Well, I mean, they, it's not like you can't drink coffee. You can, but I also love the lozenges and stuff too. Mm, yeah. You can drink coffee, but it's really it's such a um, a diuretic and dries you out so much. It dehydrates you a lot, especially also with um, lactose and dairy products can coat your throat and give you a lot of phlegm. And phlegm is like not a fun thing to have if you're trying to sing because it gets stuck in the way when you're in the middle of a high note. It's like, <laughs> ah, la, 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 you know what I mean? Like mm. it's like. <laughs> A toad in the hole. <laughs> and and before we move on to your other skills and passions, uh, you know, on the subject of performance and performances, you know, tell me a little bit about your, your favorite performances to date. Performances that I have done or have seen. Uh, let's do with what you've done, what you've been part of and, you know, you know, what you've contributed to. I had so much fun performing at the Jersey City Pride Festival last year in the Pride season. That was a really fun day. I met a lot of people and little baby gays. <laughs> and it always warms my heart meeting the little baby gays. And they're like, oh, my God, I've never met a drag queen before. And I'm like, hello, it's me, a drag queen. <laughs> Tell us about the performance. You know? what, was, uh, what was it to? What was the song? What was the it was feel? A, I did, Two different numbers. Uh, it was at the Stonewall Alley, which was um, set up as a new section of the Jersey City Pride festivities this year. So it was like a whole like alleyway with a whole stage and situation. We had a lot of a nice, um, nice crowd. It was a nice warm afternoon. Um, Lillian Bustle was emceeing, and um, I did a number which is a mix I'd made, which has um, Conga by Gloria Estefan, and it goes after um rhythm of the night from the moulin rouge soundtrack mm. so it's super fun high energy and i've got like a gold sequin flip flip sequin and fringed leotard and a big dusker cape that i like throw off and lots of shimmying and, and whatnot there are lots of photos of me making ridiculous faces in this particular performance so i really appreciate <laughs> the reactions of the people in the audience as well as the rubber face and for those who are uh, uninitiated uh, what goes into a drag show because there are a lot of different versions there like you, you can you can perform a lot of different types um but what yeah. are you know if somebody were to come to a uh drag show for the first time what, what would they, they want expect? to see and what would they what should they expect Right. So a drag show can either exist um, of a whole a whole host of different performers or it can just be one performer doing a lot of different numbers and games with the audience and interacting with the audience. Kind of depends on where it is. Sometimes with like a brunch show, it'll be like one or two performers. Sometimes at a bar show, it's like up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten performers. There's going to be dancing and kicking and twirling and maybe death dropping, depending on the person. <laughs> it's going to be live singing. There's going to be lip syncing. There's going to be games where you can pretend that you can lip sync or you can try and take your clothes off if you really want to in public, and that's your prerogative. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be you know games and free shots and maybe pizza if you're, <laughs> <laughs> if you're giving away free pizza at your shows. There's some... A lot of times there's a raffle because drag queens love to make extra money any, any way they can and they have lots of free stuff that they get from other people. Um, and yeah, lots and, of fun. Yeah, that I mean, that is at the heart of drag itself is fun. But what makes drag drag in your words? What makes drag drag? Uh, you know, a really tight performance, something that's funny or engaging or can tell a story or can make you feel an emotion. Like if you can come in there with no preset, you know, expectations of what's going to happen and leave feeling something. I think that's a job well done by a performer or a host to keep you engaged and make you feel yeah. connected to something in real time because it's live. Yeah. You, that's the special thing about it too. You get to be entertained. You get to enjoy. Uh, you get to be in glamour. Uh, and in, and, and, and be, escape. And escape. Uh, that is, yeah, that is, I think, drag. 
Um, yeah. and, and thanks for sharing. So we'll move on more to, because you're so talented, there's so many things that you do. But before we do the actual stuff, what are your main, or who or what are your main inspirations? My main inspirations. Um, I'm inspired a lot by by fashion and by history and by, you know, pop culture, things that have, you know, shaped me as a person, like the kind of humor that I grew up with might might be something from like, you know, a lot of silly sitcoms like Seinfeld or Golden Girls or like it could be, um, you know, something fresh off the runway from Paris that I saw through going through YouTube at two o'clock in the morning. It could be, um, you know, circus or sideshow or, you know, what are I, whatever art form I've been researching and diving into. I'm heavily influenced by like modern dance and sometimes ballet as well, but without the rigidity of their technique. So more so modern dance. And yeah, I'm inspired by a lot of other performers that I spend time with, that I see online. I'm inspired by so many different people all around the world. I can't. I can't even put my finger on who my top three people are. Yeah. And how, how do you vibe. <laughs> how do you absorb said inspirations? Are you like, a, let's flip through magazines, let's just surf the web, or you go out and seek performances and, and see what inspires you there? Yeah, absolutely. I love to see things live. I like to experience things. I'm a very immersive type of person. So as much as I can go out and see live shows, that's where I really feel the most active inspiration but I do spend a lot of time surfing online and collecting kind of things that I'm interested in and textures that I like Mm -hmm. um I definitely think sometimes through media like I'm inspired as well there was like a new next in fashion tv show that had some really incredible designers now I'm following them and you know seeing where they go with their style too oh speaking of of style and speaking of shows, um, I'm going to switch over to a, a different screen for the audio listeners. I just want to uh, show something that I ask all of my guests to provide me prior to uh, prior to engaging and, and talking and chatting about their art and art histories. And I ask them about their favorite photo. Uh, I try to be loose with it. I don't... Uh, say how many or by whom or of what if it's them or it's something that they took i just like give me your favorite photo and let's chat about it and this is what elise sent me elise won't be able to see it because it's on my screen um, but <laughs> all the viewers can pause on your screen. yeah so um uh, if you do, you have it in front of you. Can you see it, or you remember it? But can you describe? I the, it. Yeah, describe the photo to the people that might not be viewing it on the YouTube's, like our podcast listeners. Describe okay. your favorite photo. Okay, so first of all, the photo is taken in my apartment, and I love my apartment so much. Because <laughs> it's such a bizarre and pretty place. And it, I, in this particular section of my apartment, I have um, padded fabric peacock wallpaper. Dope. So I'm standing <laughs> in front of a peacock facade, I guess, and um, wearing a pair of overalls and a stripy tank top. And my tattoos are out, and I'm having a Google with yeah. bright red lipstick on. Yeah. So the photo is by Andrew Koenig. Um, yeah. so, uh, shout out to Andrew for taking that photo. Tell us Arc why. Light photography, I think. Is yeah. Yeah. It is arclightphoto.com with a K. Um, and t- tell the people why this is your favorite photo. Um, so I was in the process of taking some new headshots because of, you know, the production and not having any headshots as a lease. Um, because I haven't done acting in 10 years. So I was like, Ooh, why would I need a headshot? Oh shit. Now I need a headshot. And I really love this photo because it captures me in, you know, my most natural state, which is cracking a joke and like having a giggle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really like the fact that it's very natural and unposed and I'm in an outfit that I feel confident in, but still kind of is comfortable and still artistic or whatever. So I was, I was reviewing the photo and, and you're right. It can go both ways. It can be, a very very natural posed big smile or it's an actual candid snap in between conversations so those are like fun interesting 
photos when when you think about it because you can you can't really put your finger onto it or you can put your finger on both it's like yeah candid or posed really doesn't matter it works uh, it yeah. it feels good so shout out to um um arc like photo andrew koenig for the photo and you know like we mentioned earlier too you are a photographer as well mm-hmm. so what is your like f- photographic per personality philosophy what is your style and your brand so I initially I was an editorial photographer primarily and I was working a lot with models and with you know beautiful gowns and designer brands and shooting them in what at at that time I was kind of like yeah I'm going to shoot this in like a construction yard or like uh, you know living spaces I would find around the city we would get kicked out by cops more often than not when I would be shooting on set and shooting in like an Asian grocery store or like all these different different spaces around Brisbane and then once I got into burlesque I became more of a boudoir photographer so I was shooting in a lot of vintage indoor spaces and um, you know creating um, period sets and now that I live in a space that is very like kind of mid-century modern slash, you know, coke den chic. <laughs> so I see a lot of boudoir here. Like, you know, I like have a leopard print, velour, high heel, chair prop, and like, you know, another um, soft velvet chair and the peacock wall and then this wall behind me and mm-hmm. whatever else. So a mixture of different facades, a cheetah print couch. <laughs> And, and, you know, you know, both as a photographer and a subject, Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say makes a great photo? Composition is the thing that I'm most drawn to. What makes a, what makes a pose dynamic? What fills the space with purpose? What uses the thirds in the most optimal way that pleases the eye immediately when you're like, fuck yeah, Mm -hmm. all of this lighting is really important. But that plays into composition as well because you can move a person around lighting and you can move lighting around a person. So I think it's very much a teamwork makes the dream work situation there. Yeah. And, and, and then subjects as well, obviously, too. Yeah. And, as a, and as a subject. So, like, you know, this particular photo is as candid and natural, the one that you've sent us. But, you know, as a subject, what, what draws the best out of you as a model or a subject? Um, I think I definitely, I want to have fun and I want to feel comfortable, but I want to be pushed as well to make those dynamic shapes, to breathe into them. You know, it's difficult. It's physically demanding yep. modeling and yep. I'm out for, as an arthritic person out for the whole next mm. day, like creaky, like the fucking tin man that needs to be oiled. Mm. But if I'm not sore the next day, I don't feel like I've worked like hard enough at a photo shoot. So. That's that's something and, surprising that you brought up because a lot of people like um, a lot of the previous conversations I've had on the pod is like, yeah, there's like a certain style or a certain feeling. But, you know, most often people forget about how physical uh, modeling yeah. is, both as, as being a photographer is very physical, too. Mm-hmm. It's heavy shit. Yeah. You need to work like you need to, you know, work your core and your back and your quads because you're you're gonna you're gonna have to hunker down or tiptoe depending on how tall your subject is to get that proper angle. And you know, sometimes yeah, we talk about the gear, the composition, the post processing, the lighting, but the actual act of you know being at that space and and doing the capturing of the moment is also physically demanding. Uh, yeah. and, and in that light, how do you, how like in, in, in your experience, how does a photographer bring the best out of you? Is it through coaching? Is it through just general atmosphere or it's just timing? It's different for all people's. Uh, yeah, I think it definitely depends on the photographer. Like, I think sometimes it's very much atmosphere, like a good good background music, good uh, kind of, you know, making sure that we're not talking too much because I can't stand still for more, you know, more than a couple of seconds in certain poses that are quite mm, dis- uh, lots, lots of discomfort going on there, but I want to get the shot, you know. Um, you know, so a good mixture of kind of like some conversation, but some mostly focus and a good background kind of, music or tv or whatever the fuck and making sure it's a you know nice organized and clean space to move through if you're moving through different sets have it set up and plan which ones you're going to do at what times and 
getting changed and having enough time to kind of cool down in between mm-hmm. outfits yep. because it gets so sweaty, like, yep. you know, holding yourself under a soft box for <laughs> 15 yeah. minutes in yeah. one spot. And then timing, like, you know, timing the changes, the makeup, because, you know, yeah. you have to change those Bobby. things. Uh, catch up, you know, catch up. Yeah, people forget it's it's not just, you know, one thing, but again, it some, sometimes you just like pop up, pop your iPhone and take a photo sometimes can beat a real set but for the most part you need a lot of preparation about a lot of things yeah those uh insta selfies mm. and so yeah i i wanted to bring this particular segment of the podcast to a close so wanted to shout out andrew koenig again one more time arc like photo um we'll credit him in the uh, description of the podcast as well as links at the bottom of the YouTube YouTube uh, video so that you can check his work out and check out um, Elisa's photo in the overalls with the big uh, smile looking Thank away from see. the camera. Yeah, so let me just like make you bigger again into our screen. There you go. You are now uh, full screen back again. Uh, we're towards uh, the end of the pod, super tight 30, uh, unlike the other pods that uh, we do. <laughs> oh my gosh, we get so off topic. It's so, oh my God. I do have fun, but man, we waffle on. And, and that's hard. that's just how... We you know, waffle with passion. That's you know? true. We're passionate wafflers. That's true. I mean, we, yeah. we, we parade the dicks and that sometimes takes time. Um, you know, if you've been to a second line in New Orleans, you know that parading takes time. Thank so. <laughs> I love it's, New Orleans. You can have a parade I love it for too. whatever. I miss so much. You, you can make, you can request for a, your own damn parade whenever you damn want. So yeah, one day yeah. before I die, I will have a parade just with me and like maybe four friends just to like yes, really walk around. Yeah, that for you. Um, but you know, before we we end, and you know, as a uh, you as a person with you know so uh, a lot of skills and plugged into so many different. Uh, types of artistry I mean what would you say to the other people that about the struggle or about the successes of art in general that is not normally heard in you know in day-to-day life I think it's interesting that this pandemic comes at a really really crazy time, but it shows a lot of different things about how broken our society is in the States and how much when things turn to shit, people rely on art Mm -hmm. to survive. Note the amount of people that are sequestered in their own homes without lots of different entertainment, but they really are relying on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and every, every streaming device and service. Like the Met is streaming operas. And dance teachers around the world are doing free dance lessons on Facebook live Mm -hmm. and on Vimeo and YouTube and wherever else and Instagram. There's um, people that are doing uh, makeup classes and tutorials for sewing. And, you know, the arts are banding together to sew, to sew masks and robes for the, um, you know, for the health system. And, you know, I've been receiving email after email after email today of, more resources and more ways that the arts community can really help in a crisis. And I really think that people don't think on a regular basis, if you have a nine to five job, that's mm-hmm. maybe in an office or a corporate setting, you don't think about how much you actually utilize art on a day to day basis and how much that we are the people that are often hit hardest in Christ times of crisis because our, uh, we are seen as a non necessary and non essential. That's a non essential. Yeah non-essential like it's like going to a salon or a bar you know but people still rely on that shit no. more than they realize yeah, yeah we were joking <laughs> so, before you know, help out people if you can That's if you can true. afford to give you give a little extra because you know we're not going to be working until this is done with yeah. and we're going to entertain you in the meantime we're still going to do it 100%. because we believe it keeps people together and sane and but it costs a lot of money to look this cheap. Yes, sir. And and you know we were we were joking right. before we started recording is like the amount of people going on Instagram Live or or IGTV or streaming all their different crafts and passions and services is insane. The past couple of days, in both ways, it's one yeah. because people 
need to be entertained or if you're like even like uh what do you call these uh gyms and instructors and trainers they do online training uh, because one yes they need to still earn some money through their uh for their service or yeah. Otherwise, yeah. yeah they still need to sell their craft but on the on the other end too you know as a creator like you still need to get your message out you are cooped up in your apartment or in your house with the same four or five people for a couple of days people forget how important it is to do something else than what you've been doing so they start yeah you know they're they're streaming their stuff they're there's like we were joking there's so many boobs and butts on igtv now and i love it i enjoy it because it kind of normalizes the idea of there's some you have an audience out there like, you know, there's somebody who's going to support your artistry or artistry or craft, no matter how unique it is. A friend of mine is doing um, speed knitting streams, which is kind of <laughs> insane, but she has speed knitting. Speed knitting. Uh, okay. yeah, so it's like it's um, uh, it's just in, in it's unique in a way that one, I it never in a hundred years would I think that there will be a. Uh, a, a knitter on stream but <laughs> to realize that there's a giant audience out there because if Ross, you, yeah, you know yeah. painting tiny little trees yeah. happy little trees yeah if you're just stuck in your apartment and you're done with your shows you're done with cleaning you're done mm -hmm. with your work you cannot go out you oh, know no. you want hobbies that kind of take uh, a lot of time so you you knit and you read books and you do at home exercises. Embroidery. Embroider. So yeah, it's it's um and it's crunches. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good that you mentioned that you, the people that are hurt the most during these times of crisis are tip usually the ones that kind of give the most yeah, out of themselves. You're totally right. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, they, give and take, like, you know, we want the best for the community and we know that art really helps people in times of crisis yeah so we've got we got this yeah so well great message to end on um i hope you are enjoying your quarantine couple of days and possibly a couple of more days uh we will definitely be recording more on our other podcast shout out to parade of dicks um and uh and as we close elise walsh yeah this camera, that camera, the, uh, <laughs> uh, tell the people where they can find you and what they can do to support you. Yeah. So you can find me on all the different social medias. I'm on Instagram at Allegra drag, Allegra spelt like the antihistamine drag, like the queen. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Allegra underscore spread. You can find me on Venmo and tip a bitch because I would love to be able to eat next week. Tip, tip. I can drag my ass out back into <laughs> the burbs where they are not social distancing at the grocery store. And I'm very <laughs> excited about it. Six to ten feet, motherfuckers. Please, God. I don't want to get this and die. Um, and Venmo at Allegra spread in all one word. And I'm also on uh, Instagram uh, as a Satine if you want to see costume things and quarantine floral arranging things <laughs> and some more boobs and butts of me and my friends it's the teen underscore salume s-a-l-l-u-m-e-r and yeah that about wraps it up i think awesome well we will have all of elise's uh social medias as allegra as Satine in the description below we will highlight the fact that you know what Venmo is such a wonderful invention the past couple of years. PayPal as well. Yeah. Um, use it if you have a couple of extra bucks. If you are that type of person that is extremely lucky that nothing changes because of the lockdown, if you can work from home, much yeah. like myself, uh, you try to pick pick somebody. Doesn't doesn't have to be all of them. Pick someone you, you can help with. Maybe you can start with Allegra Spread at Venmo. Uh, and we'd like to thank you, you, the listener, for being with us today. This is the Fun Street Podcast. 
Uh, this is an irregularly scheduled podcast, so I will just drag my cool friends that does cool things, and we'll talk about all the cool stuff that they do um, whenever they are available. And I will just pop it on. So follow us at the social medias uh, at Fun Shoot Podcast, both on Instagram and on Twitter. Visit the podcast website at www.jonklimited.com slash fun shoot. Uh, we're on YouTube. Watch all the episodes. Watch all of the recordings. If you don't want, just want to hear our beautiful voices. If you want to see my ugly mug and Elisa's pretty face, you can go to <laughs> johnclemente.com/tv and you'll be directed to our YouTube channel, where I also have a milieu of uh, burlesque performances, photography gear reviews, and just gen- like you know random musings of. Uh, board person like myself and if you want to send us a comment uh or suggestions or questions to uh elise or any of our our past guests uh email us at funshootpodcast at gmail.com if you want to participate on the show you could actually leave a voicemail so if you want to hear yourself and you could discuss leave a voicemail at 347-934-9594 uh, we'll read it uh, on air uh, at an appropriate time. If the voicemail is inappropriate, it will just be read and heard in the privacy of my own home, in my own apartment. Again, thank you very much. <laughs> the cat will hear it too. Whiskey will hear it too. Again, thank you, listeners. At least, thank you very much for your time and your energy. And you. to all of you guys, we love you.